Hello everyone, my name is Darius Sony. For this project, I designed the Butler Matrix using Advanced Design System. I created the RF layout for the PCB using ADS. I am working with the team to assemble the PCB and test the RF uh, hardware. I drafted the PCB fabrication notes for manufacturing the PCB. I collaborated with the team to finish the project website, poster, and the final report. Hello everyone, my name is Ariel Duarte. I have designed the beamforming algorithm in MATLAB, helped design the Butler Matrix in ADS, designed the Wux and Power dividers in ADS, helped assemble the PCB. I have helped test the RF hardware. Aside from the class reports, um, I have also helped put together the project website and helped with the project poster. Hello, my name is Trevor Saunders, and uh, I'll be talking about the antenna design, the ADS simulations for the antennas, the transmitter schematic and its layout, and the case we created for the transmitter board in Fusion 360. My name is Ryan Carlomini, and for this project, I designed and built the digital control circuit, tested the digital hardware, and developed the GUI that is hosted on the Raspberry Pi. I used Fusion 360 to model and build the enclosure for the reception array, and Eagle for the PCB design to integrate the RF and digital designs into a single board. I developed the system power requirements and was in charge of procurement and inventory control, while also assisting the team with any RF task as needed. I will start this video presentation by discussing the RF side of DOA detection array that I worked on. Now here the figure on the right is the top level schematic of our DOA detection system. To be able to operate the system at 5.8 GHz, the design uses four 4x4 four four Butler matrices to implement a 16 element antenna array with four switches, four analog phase shifters, three power dividers, and an RF power detector. The array will steer the antenna's main lobe within the scan range by sequentially going through the phase shifters and switch states. This figure on the left is the Butler matrix as designed in ADS. These are a type of beamforming network that is used to feed a phased array of antenna elements. It is designed using hybrid quadrature couplers, RF crossovers, phase delay lines, and phase matching lines. One thing to note here is that the output ports of the Butler matrices are separated by lambda over 4 to avoid any mutual coupling between the antennas and decrease the number of side lobes. So now going to the component level designs of the Butler matrix, I have designed and optimized each and every component of the matrix to work at 5.8 GHz. Here we can see the schematic for the 90 degree coupler on the left and its simulations on the right. It can be confirmed using the simulations that the coupler's output ports have a 90 degree phase, phase delay within them and has a 3 dB power drop. Similarly, this is the schematic and simulations for the RF crossovers. Each crossover is designed using a combination of two hybrid couplers, and the functionality of them can be verified using the simulation here. If output port 1 is excited, and the signal, mm -hmm. uh, then the signal will pass through the crossover and go to output port 3. Output ports 2 and 4, however, will have, no, uh, will have minimal to no RF signal power. And this is the final RF PCB layout as designed in ADS. Today I will be quickly going over the MATLAB algorithm used to finalize the scanning implementation of our system. Here we have the code used to display how our design will scan based on the number of Butler matrix ports and the number of um, matrices respectively. The other function of this code is to find the states of our phase shifters needed to allow for proper scanning. Each incrementation when scanning requires a different combination of phase shifter states to properly scan towards that direction. We can also find the total uh, ray factor of the system, which in turn will allow us to visually map how the system will, will electronically scan. Uh, we'll see this in the next few slides. Each port of the Butler matrix exhibits a certain beta S, um, the phase progression of the Butler matrix ports. Exciting a different port will give you a different value for beta S. When scanning for a desired angle, one must decide on the state of the phase shifters. The plot to the left displays how the system can scan from 30 degrees to 60 degrees when exciting port 3. The table displays what states each of the phase shifters must be to allow for their scanning. The plot below shows the complete scanning um, of the system when switching between, port, uh, switching between ports and changing the states of the phase shifters. Here we also see that um, we need to excite port 4. Uh, to achieve the scanning range from 66 degrees to 86 degrees. Since scanning towards broadside induces um, a lot of side lobe errors, it was best to first find the closest degree um, that had no interference from broadside. Um, 
and begin to scan from that reference point. Here we have the same scanning capabilities when port 1 is excited. Here we have the scanning capabilities when uh, port 3 is excited. And uh, this here, um, this plot gives a visual aid to help see what scanning uh, location the system can achieve and where potential misreadings can occur. Now we are looking at the schematic of the transmitter. Uh, the main components to focus on are the VCO and the amplifier. The VCO has a, um, it's fed 4.8 volts through a potentiometer and then this gives it a 5.8 uh, gigahertz signal straight into the amplifier which then feeds into the antenna. Uh, we will now be looking at the ADS simulations for the antenna. Uh, what we have here is the transmitter antenna and the radiation pattern. If you look over here we can see the gain 15.3, the radiation efficiency 71% and other parameters right here like the directivity and the electric field and the magnetic field intensities. We can see here finally how the antennas were spaced out to avoid the grading lobes and also optimize for mutual coupling. So now we're going to look at the 3D model of the case that was designed in three, Fusion 360 for the transmitter board. We can see on the back side that there's an aperture for the exposed antennas and there's also an opening at the bottom for the battery pack. On the front there's also another opening for the power push button that will turn the system on and off. This is the Fusion 360 model for the reception array enclosure. The board is approximately 411 millimeters by 255 millimeters. An acrylic cover with a hinge will be used so that the power supply and wiring connections are easily accessible. On the back of the PCB and on the front of the enclosure for the reception array, we see an array of antennas, which will face the users holding transmitters in the classroom so that we can receive transmitting signals. On the left of the enclosure is a 50 watt meanwhile power supply, which will be used to power all the components on the PCB. This is the test circuit that we currently have for the project. The final PCB is on its way and will be assembled within the next few weeks to meet the competition deadline. However, this test circuit has been designed to simulate the entire system exactly the way that it would work with the RF components assembled and placed on the PCB. On the left side of the board, we see the logic conversion circuits and the regulator that is used to distribute power on the board. We also see the analog to digital converter circuit on the left side, which has a potentiometer going into it, which simulates the RF power that would go into the ADC and be converted for processing. A Raspberry Pi Zero is used to control and simulate the entire system as seen in the middle. On the right side of the board, we have the four shift registers that will be used in the final design and the LEDs indicating the digital values that will be sent to the phase shifters to provide a specific phase shift for the RF signal. Further to the right, we see a series of NAND gates, which are used as a two to four decoder that simulates the switch operation. While all that is shown to display the operation of the RF components, the GUI that is hosted on the Raspberry Pi is shown here. By using a random walk, I was able to simulate a group of three users moving throughout a classroom while holding the transmitting units. Due to heavy processing from the function used in the matplotlib library, it takes about a second to update the user's location. In the event that a user turns away or is too far from the receiving array, the user will no longer be visible on the GUI. This can be simulated by turning the potentiometer value below the threshold value set for the program. Since I'm only using one potentiometer, for all the power levels of the three users. By turning the potentiometer down, we can see that none of the users are displayed on the GUI. Then by simply turning the potentiometer back up to a value above the threshold, we can simulate the users are in range and are facing the antenna array. To add this functionality, I added in a transistor to this test circuit that would only allow power to flow during the desired scan angles. This transistor is not included in the final design because it is only used to help simulate the RF components. Once the RF components are fully assembled onto the PCB, 
This feature is no longer needed.